Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Doris. No, you'll have to include me out tonight. I've got to discuss an idea for a movie. Uh Uh-uh. No, I can't make it, Angel. No, I can't miss this. These characters have dreamed up the perfect switch. Instead of shooting pictures, they plan to shoot people. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Falling Star. It's Sunday afternoon in New York, and in his hotel suite, Ken Marlowe, who smashed his way to movie stardom by portraying a two-fisted drinking man, is I'll giving a sample of the performance that I'll made him famous. Him good. Only this time, I'll Ken isn't him. acting. I'll fix them all. When I get through with those crumbs, they'll know better than the horse. Or... Yeah? Well, it's about time, fella. That's what I thought, too. Huh? How are you, Ken? Oh, Jackie Howard. <laughs> I'm sorry, I... I was expecting somebody else. I'll bet she's a lot prettier. Uh, nothing like that. I'm here with a wife. It's a funny thing. I didn't even know you were in town. I thought I left you on the West Coast. Well, haven't you heard? Trailways runs all over the country. All you got to do is I... buy a ticket. Uh, uh, look, Jackie, I, I I know what you want. I intended to... I intended to clean up that 15 grand I owe you before I left. It's uh, 19. Oh, 15, 19. What's the difference? I'm good for it. I am. Someone told me you washed up at National Pictures. They're crazy. I'm in like Flynn. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Of course, if they don't pick up your option, you see my position. As I said, you're into me for 19 grand. And as I said, I'm good for it. I can write my own ticket at any studio. Who is the number one box office draw on 49? You? Well, they are. No. There you were. That was 49, Ken. Three years is like 300 in Hollywood. Look, I tell you, you got nothing to worry about. National will pick up my option on the 23rd. And uh, when can I expect you to pick up these IOUs? Look, Jackie, if you're going to take that attitude, you can whistle for your dough. Nobody pushes me around. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You're a pretty tough boy in pictures. That's right. <laughs> Well, luckily, I never go to the movies. That's the idea. Let's understand each other, Ken. You owe me 19 grand. I expect to have it on the 23rd. If I don't, you'll be... Hello, darling, I'm back. Can't you say I'm busy, Laura? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there's no need to apologize, Mrs. Marlowe. I'm Jackie Howard. How do you do? Uh, I've heard so much about you. (laughs) And I wish I could say it wasn't true. Well, I'm sure I'm in the way, so if you'll excuse me... Oh, no, don't bother. I was just leaving. Well, what do you say, Ken? Shall we make it for a week from Friday? I'll do my best. That's all I ask. Well, this has been a real pleasure, Mrs. Marlowe. Maybe we'll uh, meet again. I hope so. A dirty bum. What was he doing here? None of your business. Darling, I don't want to make a noise like a wife, but... 
If you owe Jackie Howard money... I said it's none of your business. Don't you understand? I'm only thinking of you. If you're in a jam, I stop nagging? But all I want to do is All you want to do is drive me crazy. (gasps) Where's my coat? I'm going to find a place where a man can have a drink in peace. Hi, Steve. Can I help you? Yeah, is Mr. Marlowe or... Never mind, I see him. Hello, Ken. I've been looking for you. How do you watch, Steve? Just saw Laura. You're really living your part, aren't you, boy? What? The two-fisted He-Man. That's a beautiful shiner she's sporting. Somebody asked no, you. No, but I hate to see you louse her up. She's one in a million. Look how she stuck by you when you got in that mess out in Beverly Hills. Why don't you mind your own business, Steve? I try to. Well, you're not very good at it. I pay you 200 bucks a week to take care of my publicity. I haven't seen my name in print for months. Sometimes a publicity man does a job by keeping his client's name out of the papers. What kind of a crack is that? Who squared that beef with that girl in Santa Monica and that little chicken in Cena? Look, Steve, if you don't like it, you know what you can do. You know, I was just thinking, if National doesn't pick up your option... You're going to be in trouble. Who says so? I could go to Metro or Fox. Well, I got a scoop for you, boy. They wouldn't let you through the main gate. Your only chance is national. Now, you've got to behave yourself until they make up their minds. What kind of a jam did you get yourself into with Jackie Howard? Oh, so Laura's been blabbing. She hasn't been doing anything of the kind. I saw Jackie in the lobby. I put two and two together. Well, if you'd stop adding and pay more attention to business, we'd all be better off. Why don't you get me some publicity? Okay. Maybe you could stop a runaway horse. Don't be funny. I was just pointing out that putting three quarts of booze away isn't considered front-page stuff anymore. You see, editors are funny. They Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got an idea. Suppose my life was threatened. Oh, forget it. Why? It sounds pretty good to me. Now, if we went to the cops... In case you haven't heard, Ken, horsing around with the law is a pretty serious matter. Okay. Isn't Mike Waring a buddy of yours? Who? That private dick they call a falcon. What about him? They keep play ball? No. No, Mike wouldn't touch anything that's phony. Why would he have to know? Suppose we cooked up some anonymous phone uh-uh, call. Uh-uh, it's out. Why? Because I thought of it? Ken, don't be ridiculous. Well, we're going to handle it my way. We'll hire the Falcon to be my bodyguard. Then you leak it to the papers. Ought to be worth a couple of columns. I don't like it, Ken. Well, I don't like paying your salary while I dream up the ideas. Now go call Waring. Set up a date. <laughs> That's the story, Mike. After the third phone call, Ken thought we ought to do something about it. I see. Uh, not that I was worried, you understand. I can take care of myself, but I had to think of Laura. Laura? My wife. You know how a gal worries. Mm-hmm. Tell me some more about these phone calls, Marlowe. Do you recognize the voice? Uh, no, I, I thought it was a gag at first. What convinced you otherwise? Well, this morning, someone took a pot shot at me while I was playing golf with Steve. Did you report it to the police? He didn't want to, Mike, but I insisted. What did they say? They thought it was a publicity stunt. Is this? No. You sure, Steve? Oh, now, look, Mike, you've known me for how many years? Ten, twelve? I think I've always leveled with you. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't blame me for being suspicious. Who did you talk to at headquarters? A Sergeant Corbett. Now, there's a phony if I ever met one. He happens to be a friend of mine. Well, no offense, old man. I only well, meant... skip it. Have you any idea who might be after you? No. You indulging in any extracurricular activities? What do you mean? Women. You take me for an idiot? I'm married to the greatest little gal in the world. Mm-hmm. You owe anybody any money? No, I'm the kind who pays his bills and always on the dot. You sound too good to be true. Huh? The more I hear of this, the more I'm convinced Corbett was right. Come again? The way you tell it, you're the most popular man in the class. Okay, if that's the way you feel, we'll get somebody else. There are other private detectives in New York. And better, too. Come on, Steve. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, forget it. It's not your fault. Just say it's a clash of personalities. You coming, Steve? Yeah. So long, pal. I'll be seeing you. You bet. Give me a call before you leave town. I will. Well, I hope you're satisfied. I am. I think Waring's going to work out fine. So help me, you're nuts. Didn't you hear him say I know say what he that... said. He thinks this is a publicity stunt. Well, all he caught was a prologue. He'll play ball after the first act. What are you talking about? Let's find a phone. I gotta cast the show. And I know just the boy to play the lead. Yeah? 
X Riley around? Who wants to know? Tell him it's Ken Marlowe. Why, you no good louse. How can you have the now nerve? Keep your shirt on, Tex. Bet you thought I forgot about that hundred bucks you loaned me before I went to Hollywood. Well, didn't you? No, this is my first trip to New York in six years. You could have mailed it. Ah, that's too impersonal. I wanted to give it to you myself with a little bonus. How would you like to pick up an additional 500? I don't sound like the Ken Marlowe I know and hate. What do I have to do? Well, uh, I got a little part I'd like you to try out for. In a picture? It's a play I'm going to produce on my own. But first, I'd like to see a dress rehearsal. I don't get it. Well, my wife doesn't know anything about this, and I'd like to test her reaction. If you meet me in the Creighton lobby in 20 minutes, we'll run over the script. Hey, Laura, you better order some more ice. I'm running low. Oh, all right, Ken. Uh, while you're at it, get some gin. You expecting someone? Well, Steve Nichols said he might drop around. Answer the door. Just a second. Well, hiya, sugar. I beg your pardon? I beg yours. Is the Hollywood hot shot in? Who is it, Laura? Well, Never I... mind, I'll announce myself. Hiya, Marlowe. Who the devil are you? Oh, just an autograph hound. Get out. Now, where did I put my pencil? I had it right here a minute. Hey, look at what I found. Ken! What's the idea of the gun? Well, you can't say you weren't warned, Marlowe. You owe a friend of mine some dough. He told you to get it up. Since you did No, you can't. Get out of my way, sir. No. Will you stop butting in? I'm not afraid. You don't know what you're doing. Yes, I do. Look, lady, I got nothing against you. Now, get out of the way. See what a hero he is, Ken? He's afraid of a woman half his size. I'm warning you, baby. If you don't get out of the way, I'll let you... Is that you, Haskell? No, it's me, Sergeant. Well, if it ain't that high-flying bird, the fog. Welcome to our little nest. Who writes your material? A fellow out in California. He works real cheap. He should. So is Ken Marlowe around to see you this morning? Yeah. I spotted it for a publicity stunt. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, too, but I changed my mind. Someone tried to gun him an hour ago. Obviously, they didn't make it. How do you know? Well, I already talked to you, Mr. Marlowe. Hey, here's the jacket of the bullet we found in the room. What do you make of it? It's a blank. That's right, Mr. Waring. It's a blank. Marlowe was in no danger at all. Well, I guess that makes me the chump of the year. I guess it does. Well, I had a little help. Okay, Sarge, I'll be seeing you. I've got to thank the man who thought me so deserving. That's you, Laura? Sorry to disappoint you, Marlowe. Oh, hey, Waring. Sit down. No, thanks. I just dropped by to congratulate you on a magnificent performance. What's eating you? It was a beautiful job of sucking me in. You hired whoever took that shot at you. You're nuts. What I can't figure out is how your wife got in the act. What happened? She had to live apart for herself? Huh? I don't think she knew the bullet was a blank. You don't rate a gal like that. You got your nerve. Get out. Does that mean I'm fired? What do you think? Good. Because I hate to hit a client. Come on, Marlowe. We can't end the scene with you on the floor. Your public would never stand for it. Now get up and make like a hero. Hiya, Mike. Oh, hi, Sergeant. I didn't expect to see you again today. Well, you know me. Always do the unexpected. Are you up to see Ken Marlowe? Yeah. What happened? Nothing worth talking about. No, you're too modest. All right, so I slapped him a couple of times. He had it coming. Maybe the slaps, but not the rest. What are you talking about? He's dead, Mike. He's what? He's out for all time. Were you wearing brass knucks? You're crazy. I wish I were. Better get your coat, fella. We got a long ride ahead. What do you and your family do on a weekend? If you're average Americans, on a Saturday or Sunday, you enjoy your car. You take a short drive or a long trip. 
If you use your automobile a lot on weekends, you have a good idea how many millions of cars pour out onto the highways on Saturdays and Sundays. That's one reason why the traffic death toll is so high and why the utmost caution is needed in weekend driving more than any other time. So remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike Waring was informed Ken Marlowe was dead. And now at the scene of the crime, Sergeant Corbett gives our hero some fatherly advice. Listen, Mike, I got it all figured out. I'm sure you'll be able to cop a plea. What are you babbling about? Well, it was self-defense, wasn't it? You didn't mean to kill him. And I didn't. When I left here, he was at the other end of the room. With the back of his head caved in? Well, that's just it, Corbett. How did it get that way? I didn't slug him from behind. Well, he must have hit it when he fell. Against what? That sofa? Wouldn't hurt a fly. Mm, how about the fireplace? No, he wasn't anywhere near it. There'd be bloodstains if he were. Well, there must be something around that caused the damage. The familiar blunt instrument? Yeah, let's see those fire tongs. Clean. Well, how about those bookends? Oh, not a stain on him. Listen, Mike, maybe the killer took the weapon with him. Does that mean you're absolving me? If we can come up with some evidence. You think the murderer might have walked off with it? Uh, I doubt it. A lot of blood flowed. I can't see anyone taking a chance on staining his clothes. Well, he didn't leave it around for us to find. Hey, wait a minute. There's something missing in this room. What? Well, that's just the trouble. I can't... I got it. Liquor. What are you talking about? Marlowe was a drinker. A boy like him would have at least one bottle around. Say, you're right. Where's the trash basket? Probably in the pantry. Well, let's get it. The killer might gamble. The next time the chambermaid came through, she'd dump it without a second glance. Hey. Quite a collection, huh? There's our baby. Don't touch it. I won't. But mine are probably the only fingerprints that aren't on it. Everyone else who was up here must have been invited to help himself. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, Haskell, take this down to the lab. Well, now you're convinced I had nothing to do with this murder? Yeah. But if you didn't kill Marlowe, who did? That's what I intend to find out. Why don't you stay out of this, Mike? Oh, no. Whoever tailored this frame did a lovely job. It's just lucky I didn't fit the picture. You can't blame me if I want to get my hands on the artist. I tell you, Mike, I don't know anything about it. First I heard of it was when the cops phoned me, they found Ken's body. Whose bright idea was this publicity stunt in the first place, Steve? Ken's. I didn't want any part of it. Then why did you bring him to me? I couldn't help myself, Mike. I was working for the man. Yeah, that's another thing I don't understand. How come you tied up with a heel like Marlowe? The dough was good. When did you last get it? Huh? According to what I hear now, he was strictly no pay. When did you get your last salary check? Come on, Steve. It'll be easy enough to find out. Three months ago. Then why did you stick? He was on the skids. No, he wasn't. National had till Friday to pick up his option. You think they would have? Well, there's no telling. It was an even money bet. Well, who had it in for him? No one. Look, Steve, we're no longer playing games. If he owed you dough, he must have owed others. Jackie Howard. Who's Jackie Howard? He owns a gambling joint off the strip. Ken was into him for around 20 grand. Is this Howard character in town? Yeah, staying at the Brighton. Okay, we got one suspect. Let's try for two. What about Mrs. Marlowe? Don't talk like a chump. She was in love with the guy. Well, he certainly didn't rate a wife like that. Nobody does. Oh, sounds like you go for her yourself. Oh, don't be silly. You know I'm married. I suppose you feel like a big brother to her. That's exactly how I feel. You know something, Steve? I believe you. Thanks. No, I mean it. I think Laura explains why you continued working for Marlowe. Maybe that's why you knocked yourself out suppressing those items that would have ruined him. You didn't want her hurt, right? Yeah. Why, Steve? It won't make any sense to you, Mike. Well, try me. First day I met her, she reminded me of Edith. Edith? My kid's sister. She was married to a boy like Ken. And what happened to her? She's dead. Oh, sorry. Maybe she's better off. So you transferred your feelings to Laura? Anything wrong with that? No, I think it's very commendable. Still, I wonder how Laura feels about it. Huh? Yeah, why don't I find out? Oh, look, Mike, you're not to bother her. She knows nothing about Ken's murder. Yeah, well, I've only got your word for it, Steve. Not that I don't believe you understand. But I'd like to check these things for myself. I'll be seeing you, fella. Who is it? 
I'd like to see Laura Marlowe. There's no one here by that name. I know there is. This is Mike Waring, Mrs. Marlowe. Please go away. I've got to talk to you. Believe me, I wouldn't disturb you, but it's important. Come in. Thanks. How'd you know I was here? Sergeant Corbett told me. I uh, just saw Steve Nichols. And Steve sent you here? No, as a matter of fact, he insisted I leave you alone. Well, why'd you come? Because I want to solve your husband's murder. Ken meant nothing to you. He was a client. He tricked you. I still took his money. Besides, whoever killed him involved me. I don't forget things like that. Now tell me, what sort of a man was your husband? You must have some idea. Yes, but I'd like the woman's viewpoint. It was wonderful. Oh, come now, Angel. You can't expect me to buy that. I heard... I don't care what you heard. Sure, he took a drink once in a while. Is there anything wrong with that? What about slapping you around? He never did. Well, you can't blame me for jumping to conclusions. But take a blind man not to notice those bruises on your face and arm. How did you get them? I fell. Question is, did Ken push you? How dare you? Now, look, Mrs. Marlowe, I don't mean to be obnoxious, but we've got a murder to solve. Did your husband play around on the outside? No. What about those stories? Lies, every one of them. They were started by his enemies. Oh, so he was just a misunderstood kid. No. I understood him, and that's all that counted. All right, Mrs. Marlowe. I think you're telling the truth. I'm overwhelmed. Well, you should be, because if Jackie Howard doesn't turn out to be a liar, I won't know what to do. Take care of yourself, Angel. I got to run along. Take the Telegram, Jackie Howard. 19, please. Telegram, Jackie Howard. Right here, boy. Hello, Jackie. My name is Mike Waring. What's the idea? Well, this is the only way I could think of to get acquainted. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about Ken Marlowe. You a reporter? No, a private detective. Who are you representing? Myself. I understand Marlowe was in huck to you. Where, uh, you understand that from? Oh, you mind holding that match? Thanks. Who told you Marlowe was into me? Steve Nichols. Well, I got a flash for Steve. Marlowe took care of those IOUs this morning. <laughs> I don't see how. He owed you 19 grand. According to the police, he had only 800 bucks in his checking account. He paid me in cash. Oh, got it out of his mattress, I suppose. Well, now that you mention it, I believe he did. <laughs> you know, Jackie, you're a welcome change from everybody else in this case. Am I? Yeah, they were telling the truth. Suppose I showed you the money. Oh, you probably could. Boy like you always travels well healed. But can you prove it came from Marlowe? Well, let's look at it another way. Can you prove it didn't? If I can, it'll make you a choice suspect. <laughs> you know, Waring, there's one thing I don't like about New York. There must be something in the air that makes everybody run off at the mouth. I suppose it's different on the coast? Well, we have a special treatment for those who do. I'd like to see it. I'll have to discuss it uh, first with a fellow Californian. But, uh... Don't be discouraged. I'll get back to you. Yes? Hello, Stan. Oh, hiya, Jackie. I thought by now you'd be on your way back to the coast. You thought wrong. Say, you've got yourself a nice little spot here. Uh, look, Jackie, I don't want to seem rude, but I, I was just on my way out. Oh, relax. I won't stay long. Too bad about Canada, then. Yeah. What do you think killed him? I have no idea. Oh, you must have, Steve. You're a bright boy. No, I'm not. Well, maybe you're right. Now, I had you pegged as the kind who kept his nose clean. And don't I? Not in my book. Why don't you tell Mike Waring that Marlowe owed me money? He asked me. You're the real helpful type, aren't you? I do my best, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't pay. People don't appreciate it. Oh, you dirty. What's the matter, boy? Can't you catch your breath? Dirty. Maybe that's a good thing. You talk too much anyway. A little of Doc Howard's treatment may break the habit. Uh, hold still, Steve. I'm afraid this is going to hurt. Oh. 
Unbelievable as it may sound, accidents on the nation's highways in the last 10 years have killed more than 300,000 Americans like you and me. What's more, they have injured no fewer than 11 million men, women, and children, crippling several million of these victims for life. To get the significance of those figures, try to visualize a great fleet of automobiles, trucks, buses, and other vehicles moving into the city of Jacksonville, Florida, and killing every person there in a decade. Help to protect your own life and the lives of your family by driving safely. Work for greater highway safety for yourself and for your family in your own community and state. And whenever you take the wheel of your own car, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Two hours have passed since Steve Nichols received a little of Jackie Howard's specialized treatment. And now in Steve's hotel room, we find him recuperating from the visit. Where's the doctor? You sure you gave him the right room number? Now, take it easy, Laura. He'll be here. All right, Steve, try some of this. Come on, it's good for what ails you. Mike. Now don't talk, just drink it down. I'm, I'm all right. How did you find me? She called me. How do you feel, darling? Laura. Here, raise your head. I'll fix the pillow. You're a doll. Who did it, Steve? Huh? Who gave you the shellacking? I don't know. Come on, Steve. You can't hold out. Look, must you question him now? Yes, I'm afraid I must. This is all tied up with your husband's murder. It was Jackie Howard, wasn't it? Yes. Why did he do it? I have no idea. You know anything that would definitely mark him as Marlowe's killer? No. You sure, Steve? Anything at all? Can't think of a thing. You've got to. It's our only chance of making this come out the way we want. I don't understand. Well, Jackie must have felt he had good reason to give Steve that beating. What do you mean? Well, you don't feel Laura killed her husband. What? Oh, now look, Mike, I told Uh, you. I take it you don't, so that brings us back to Jackie again. Now, what would be his motive in killing Marlowe? Well, Ken owed him money. Well, how could he be sure Marlowe wouldn't raise it? Ken couldn't. We were broke. But you would have been on Easy Street if National picked up his option. I don't think they would. Still, where there's life, there's hope. You told me they had till the 23rd. Today is the 18th. So? So, Jackie would be sucker not to wait it out. What are you getting at? Well, if neither you nor Jackie killed your husband, who does that leave? I don't know. Yes, you do. It's Steve. No. Yes, that's why Howard gave him that pasting. He felt Steve cost him 19 grand. I don't believe it. You didn't do it, Steve. Tell me. Tell me, I gotta know. He's right, Laura. Why? Why? Ken never hurt you? No. But he hurt you. He was the only man I ever loved, and you killed him. But don't you see, honey? I was don't only trying... Don't judge me! I hate you! <laughs> oh, Laura, listen. Get away from me! Mike, explain to me. I can't. He was no good. And she loved him. I'm sorry, Steve. I've got to call the police. (laughs) What do you say, Mike? Some more coffee? No, thanks, Sergeant. Now, come on, come on. Cheer up. What are you dragging for? Well, you must have some idea. Steve Nichols was my friend. And he committed a murder. Well, there's no question about that. Tell me something. Was he in love with Laura? If he was, he was able to kid himself into believing it was strictly platonic. He thought Marlowe was hard-timing her. Well, he was right. No, he wasn't. You mean there was nothing to those stories about Marlowe playing around? Oh, they were true enough. But they didn't mean a thing to Laura. She was in love with him, and that's all that counted. This goes to prove it's awful dangerous to play God. You never know what's best for other people. The Case of the Happy Hoodlum. The Case of the Happy Hoodlum, that's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon... When Mike Waring learns that you don't need a gun to commit murder, sometimes you can kill them with kindness. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. 
Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Nancy. Uh, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Mm-hmm. Some boys are planning a surprise party for me, and I'll be hanged if I don't show up. Now, then again, I may be hanged if I do. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Happy Hoodlum. It's early evening in New York. And at Novak's, a smart gambling Gentlemen spot on New York's east side, the proprietor steps out of his office and surveys his domain. Obviously, what he sees doesn't please him. Letty. Yes, Mr. Novak? I'd like to see you. Sure. Harry, take the stick, will you? The boss and I got business to discuss. What's on your mind, Mr. Novak? Sit down. Thanks. Drink? You know I'm working. Is that what they call it? Huh? Take a look at these. That's last month's take. Uh, 3 dollars Not good. Well, that's the understatement of the year, Paletti. We're 14 grand off April. When I gave you the job as manager... I here. guaranteed I could double the take. Uh-huh. Well, you got to understand, Mr. Novak. Things have changed. I couldn't figure out Lasker opening his joint just two blocks away. Well, what do you intend to do about it? What can I do? Of course, if this was the old days in Chicago, I could handle it easy enough. Like I once told Al, you know, Al Capone, there's only one way to deal with a character like Lasker. Take care of him. Take care of him? Ah, you know what I mean. And uh, you do that for me? That's nothing. If I thought it would help, I'd cut off my right arm. I'm touched. I mean it. I'm not much for talking, but you've been real swell. All you got to do is say the word All and... All right, let... Paletti, I'm saying it. Take care of Lasker. What? Aren't those the right words? Oh, now look, Mr. Novak. What's the trouble? You just said you'd do anything in the world for me. Well, uh... Well, suppose I talk to Lasker first. There's hmm? been too much talk already. I think a little action is indicated. You got a gun, Politi? Or will you use mine? Is that you, Monty? Yes, again, Lasker. Who are you? Honey Politi. Maybe you heard of me. I can't say I have. I work for Frank Novak. How did you get in here? Never mind. I'm here. That's all that counts. You may have a point there. They do pay off on results, don't they? However, Mr... Poletti. I'd advise uh -huh. you... Get away from that buzzer. Get away, Lasko, or I'll plug you. I mean it. You're kind of new at this, aren't you? Huh? What's the trouble? Couldn't Novak find a more qualified man? I'm doing all right. I got in here, didn't I? There must be an answer for that. Though it escapes me at the moment. What's on your mind? You ought to know. Novak warned you to shove up shop. Let me ask you something, Bloody. How much does Novak pay you? What difference does that make? You look like a bright boy. How would you like to go to work for me? What? You could start right now. now look, Lasker, if you think you can buy me off... I'll pay 5000 for that gun. 5000 And Novak would never know. You're crazy. He'd find out in ten minutes. He needn't. Tell him you couldn't get to me. I don't like those kind of jokes, Lasker. I'm not joking. You said uh, ten grand? I said five. Where's the dough? In my desk. Uh -huh. I'll get it. It's in the top drawer. You'll find twelve $1,000 bills in an envelope. Just leave the other seven there. <laughs> Wouldn't I be a chump to do that? All right, Lasker. Well, you take it. 
Don't be a fool, Paletti. You didn't really think you were going to buy your way out of this? I certainly did. You couldn't walk out of here alive. I'd like to see someone stop me. That would be fairly simple. You see, there's a recorder in the basement. Huh? It's taking down every word of this dialogue. When you get downstairs, you'll find a couple of boys ready to usher you out. You're lying. Think so? I'll be glad to show you the microphone. Uh. Neat, isn't it? Looks like a cigarette box, doesn't it? Why, you dirty... Now, there's no reason to be annoyed, Paletti. I'm still willing to stand by my end of the bargain. Keep $5,000 and let me have the gun. How do I know you won't have me knocked off? You have my word. <laughs> That's a hot one. Naturally, you wouldn't understand, but a gentleman's word is his bond. In any event, you have no choice. If Novak ever finds out, he'll kill me. You should have thought of that before. Now, may I have the gun, please? Thank you. Yes, I wouldn't be at all surprised if this proves a wonderful arrangement. Hey, you won't be sorry, Lasker. I'm the kind of guy, if you ask me to cut off my right arm, I... I may at that. All right, Pletty. Keep in touch. I'll have something for you real soon. But uh, don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> That you, Pelletti? No. He hasn't come back yet, Mr. Novak. That's funny, Red. Did he call in? Not that I know of. What time you got? Uh, quarter past seven. Better check his hotel. He should have... Want me to get... Uh-uh, I'll get it. Yes? I'd like to talk to Frank Novak, please. This is Novak speaking. You got a Tony Pelletti working for you? Why? I just thought you might be interested. He sold you out to Laska. Come again? Laska bought him off. Paid him five thou. Who is this? Well, let's just say I'm a troublemaker. You wouldn't care to leave your name? No, I don't think so. I just want to show my gratitude. Well, that's all right, Novak. I'll get my kicks reading the papers. He hung up. Did you hear that, Red? Yeah. What do you think? I think I made a mistake in Pilotti. I never should have dealt with an amateur. Wire bracket in Detroit and ask him to send us an expert. On second thought, ask him to send a couple. Yeah. We'll find enough work to keep him busy. Who is it? Mike Waring. The second. Hello, Marie. Well, I suppose you want to see Tony. Is he in? Sit down. Thanks. Tony, you got a visitor. Who is it, honey? Come out and see. Well, Mike Waring, you old so-and-so. What are you doing here? Well, I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop by. Well, if you're not a sight for sore eyes. Hey, Marie, put up a pot of coffee, will you, sweetie? No, don't bother. That's no bother at all. Right, honey? When have you ever been wrong? <laughs> what a girl. Always got a comeback. <laughs> yeah, so I've noticed. Hey, Mike, you remember that night around Arnheim when you, me, and Irving Fox went out on that patrol and Irving brought in that prisoner? Yeah, only he turned out to be a chicken colonel from the 76th Division. Oh, that was a night. I was just saying to Marie the other night, I haven't seen you or Irving in... Gee, it seems like years. Not to me. Get her. Always clowning. Yeah, that's me, Milton Burrell. If you'll move, I'll set the table. Uh, uh, please don't trouble yourself. I just stopped by to see if everything's under control. Why shouldn't it be? Well, I don't know whether you've heard, soldier, but uh, you've got a namesake in town. There's another Tony Paletti. You call that news? According to the phone book, there are 11 of them in New York. Yeah, well, the one I had in mind works for a gambler named Frank Novak. So? So I got a rumble that a couple of hoods just moved in from Detroit looking for him. Now, what's that got to do with me? Nothing, I hope. But these boys are kind of trigger-happy. I'd hate to see him make a mistake. <laughs> Listen to Marie, ain't he the limit? Well, mistakes have happened before, Tony. That's how they finally caught up with Murder Incorporated. They got the wrong man. What do you think he should do? Well, I've already called the police, and if you people have no objection, I'd like to stick close for a couple of days. You're out of your mind. Why? I think it makes sense. Oh, now, look, honey, there's nothing to worry about. What do you mean there's nothing to worry about? Didn't you just hear him say? Now, Mike was always a great warrior. You should have seen him at Remagen. Well, just the same, Tony, if you don't mind. I do mind. The day I need a nursemaid, I'll be ready for the old soldier's home. Now, come on, Captain, drink your coffee. We're going to fight the Battle of the Bulge all over again. Thank you. 
86 Precinct, Corbett. Hello, Sergeant. Mike Waring. Oh, I knew my luck couldn't hold out. The minute I woke up this morning, I read my horoscope and it said, beware. You know, if someone tapped this phone, they wouldn't realize how much you love me. I hide it real well, don't I? What's on your mind? What's the latest in that Tony Paletti mess? Well, we still don't know who's behind it. But from what I hear now, the boys who were imported for the job went back to Detroit. Where did you pick that up? Some stoolie. And he claims they left without finding Paletti? Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Now look, Mike. Well, they wouldn't leave without doing their job, not pros. What's your interest in this, anyway? I told you I've got a buddy with the same handle. I'd hate for any accidents to happen. Oh, and that you're getting to be a real old lady. I'm serious, Corbett. Yeah, so am I. All you need's a rocking chair, and you could pose for Whistler's mother. <laughs> Maybe I'll get you one for Christmas. Taxi? Taxi? That's him, Dave. Let's go. Hey, Cap! Oh. Going our way, fella? We'd be glad to give you a lift. No, thanks. What's the matter? You bashful? Well, who are you? Oh, that's unimportant. Question is, are you Tony Paletti? Yeah, that's right. I was just telling Dave here, I thought I'd recognize you. Remember me? No. Harry Froman. We did a hitch in the Navy together in the Pacific. Well, that's a good trick, because I was with the Army in the Atlantic. Atlantic, Pacific, what's the difference? It's all one world. Get in. Oh, you got the wrong Paletti. I don't think so. I tell you, you're making a mistake. We'll soon find out. Let's go. No. Okay, sucker. Then take it here. Five minutes have passed since Tony Paletti was shot down on a street corner. Now we find Mike Waring down at the morgue in answer to Sergeant Corbett's call. All right, Jim. What's the idea? If you think spending a Sunday afternoon here is my idea of fun, you're crazy. Well, I want you to identify a body. Who's? Well, that's for you to decide. All right, Haskell. Oh, no. You know him? You know I know him. It's Tony Paletti... I warned you about this. I had a hunch. I know, Mike, but what could we do? You refused police protection. Wouldn't even let you hang around. How did that happen? Well, there were like 8,000 eyewitnesses, so we got 8,000 different versions. The best we've been able to put together is your friend was waiting on the corner of Amsterdam and 73rd when this blue Nash pulled up. The driver got out, let him have it, took off. Anybody get the license number? Yeah, yeah. Stolen from a doctor in Brooklyn. Left the keys in the car. <laughs> Seen enough? Yes, yeah, too much. Well, I ordered a pickup on the other Tony Paletti. He ought to know who was responsible. Yeah, but until you find him, you're stymied. Well, you aren't. Somebody's got to break the news to his wife. What? You mean Marie hasn't been told yet? No. Looks like you're elected. Oh, now listen, Corbett... He served in your outfit, Mike. That's the least you owe him. Now hop to it like a good kid. <laughs> Hello, Marie. If you're looking for Tony, he isn't home. Uh, will you mind if I come in? You want to wait? It's all right with me. I don't know why I put up with it. He has no consideration. Hmm? Promised he'd be home at five. Probably met a couple of boys, started to fight the war over again. Yeah, well, uh, listen, Marie, there's something I've got to tell you. What did he do? He didn't do anything. Don't kid me. I know Tony. He got himself in a mess and he sent you here to square it. Well, you can tell him for no, me. No, no, no. You don't understand. Tony's been hurt. Where is he? Well... Where is he? I want to see him. You can't. I can't? No, he's dead. No. No. I'm sorry, Marie. I, I, I don't believe it. It's not true. Yes, I'm afraid it is. I identified him for the police. No, there must be some mistake. There was. They got the wrong Tony Paletti. Would you get me some water? Yes, yeah, sure. And maybe you'd like something a little stronger? No, I'll be all right. 
Here you are. Thanks. Nobody could tell him anything. Well, actually, who could figure this would happen? You did. You warned him just a couple of days ago, but he was too smart to listen. He knew everything. Look, aren't you being a little hard on him? Think it's going to be easy for me? No, I suppose not. Well, look, have you got any family we can notify? Family? There's some friend or relative who could stay with you. Well, I got a brother in Newark. I suppose we get him over here, huh? If you let me have his phone number... I'll call him myself. Listen, Marie, I promise you one thing. I'll get the party who was responsible. Uh, if it makes you feel better, go ahead. To me, it makes no difference. Won't bring Tony back, but you do what you like. Homicide, Corbin. It's me, Sergeant. Oh, how are you, Mike? Did you see Mrs. Paletti? Yep. How'd she take it? Just the way I expected. Carry on much? No, not Marie. She's your pioneer type. What's the news at your end? We just picked up Tony Paletti. Oh, you mean the genuine article? Yeah. I want to talk to him. Well, I haven't had a crack at him myself, but if you hurry, you can join the party. I'll try and make it real soon. Fellas ain't going to get away with this. Don't think you are. I know my rights. Anyone abusing him, Pilotti? Yeah, where do you come off pulling me in? Well, I told you you could go as soon as you answer a few questions. And I told you I'm not doing any talking. Now, listen, you. Now, take it easy, Corbett. He's right. What? If he won't cooperate, there's nothing you can do. Now you're being smart. Oh, you think so? Well, I can book you as a material witness. I wouldn't. No? What would you do, Mr. Waring? I would let him go. Now you talk. Shut up. Huh? So you'd let him go? Yeah. Of course, you can't help it if the boys catch up with him. Huh? What are you talking about? Yeah, those hoods from Detroit who gunned the other, Tony Paletti. I guess they must have discovered their mistake by now. Yeah. All right, Paletti, beat it. Huh. Well, well, well wait you've a been complaining you wanted to leave. But don't come crying to us when you get a half a dozen slugs in your belly. Huh? Well, what are you waiting for? No. No, I don't want to go. This ain't a boarding house. You got to protect me. That's the law. It's your job to see nothing happens. What could happen? You know they're after me. Who? I don't know. Come on, Paletti, who is it? I tell you, I don't know. Well, what do you think, Mike? Well, the man's obviously suffering from a persecution complex. Oh, well, then jail certainly isn't the place for him. Oh, definitely not. I'd get him out on the street as soon as possible. No, no, I... I... I'll tell you. It's... Frank Novak. Why is Novak after you? He got some screwy idea. I sold him out. Did you? You take me for a rat? Yes. Who does Novak think you made the deal with? Gerald Alaska. Gerald Alaska, huh? Well, that ought to give us enough to go on. All right, Paletti, you can go. No, you said I could stay. You promised. They kill me if they get me outside. Okay, okay. <laughs> Haskell, we're holding Paletti in protective custody. Give him the royal suite. Uh, All right, go on. They'll take care of you. Thanks, Sergeant. You won't be sorry. Don't give orders. Uh, nice boy. Who do you think tried to get him? Sounds like Novak. Mm -hmm. Could be Lasker, too. Yeah, could be. Well, you take one, I'll take the other. Let's hope that between us we wind up with the killer in the middle. Looking for someone, friend? Yeah, where does Frank Novak keep himself? Who? You heard me. You're just trying to pad your part. Is that his office? Wait a minute, Buster. Mr. Novak is busy. I think you'll make time for me. Look, Come I in. told you something. Hello, Novak. Well, if it isn't that high-flying bird, the falcon. I think he needs his wings clipped. Maybe you're the boy to do it. Maybe I That's am. That's enough, Red. Mr. Waring's an old friend of mine. Well, I wouldn't say that. Look, oh, you... It's all right, Red. I can handle this. Now get back to the floor. I'll be seeing you, mister. You got a date? <laughs> I don't think he likes you, Mike. Well, on the other hand, who does? You got a point there. What brings you here? Tony Paletti. Huh? Not the one who worked for you, but the one who was murdered this afternoon. I got a feeling you were responsible. Oh, don't be silly. I didn't even know the man. No, neither did the killers. That was the trouble. They meant to get the other one. Where'd you pick that up? From the original. He told you I was sore at him? Weren't you? Of course not. Just between us, I think the man's crazy. Look, Novak, Tony Paletti was my friend. And naturally, you want to avenge his murder. I'm going to. You know, Mike, I like your attitude. I'm not clowning. Neither am I. 
Is that all you've got to say? No, I've got lots more. You'll have to keep. I just remembered I got a call to make. But drop around again when you're in the neighborhood. Only give us a little notice. Next time, I'd like to be ready for you. Never mind, Harold. I'll answer it. Hello, Lasker. Harold. Take it easy. This is a peaceful mission. I may be permitted my doubts. Okay. Have your boy frisk me. It's exactly what I had in mind. Huh. He's not the talkative type, is he? I prefer it that way. Sit down. Thank you. Drink? Why not? Was Mike wearing around to see you? No. Well, he will be. I just spoke with him. He's investigating the Tony Paletti murder. Tony Paletti? Seems there are a couple of them. This one was killed by mistake. I wonder who could have blundered. Me too. Waring thinks it was one of us. How absurd. And that's what I said, but he didn't seem too convinced. I think he ought to be straightened out. I'm not sure I understand you, Novak. This guy Waring can get into more hair than the new Tony. If he gets into ours, the least they'll do is to close us up. That would be a pity. Yeah. Now, I know a couple of boys in Detroit. I know, thanks. What's the matter? Your Detroit friends don't seem to be too effective. I prefer the local product. Got someone in mind? Harold. You mean the dummy? As you pointed out, Harold isn't given to talk. But he is a craftsman. It's your tools, Harold. And give Mr. Novak a demonstration. minutes have passed since Mr. Lasker's boy, Harold, was instructed to give Mike Waring a demonstration of his talents. Now, as the unwilling subject and Sergeant Corbett get out of the elevator, they compare notes. So you talked to Novak, got nowhere, huh? Well, you admit you didn't do any better with Lasker. No, can't say as I did. Well, let's go in and hold a cup. Hey, your mouth's open. What do you make of these scratches? Huh? Near the lock. Someone used a gimmick there. Uh, must have company. Yeah. Lights out? Uh-huh. Wait till I get ready. Okay, kick it open. Get down. You all right, Mike? Yeah. The flash came from behind the sofa. All right, you. Come on out. Throw your gun in the middle of the floor. I'm going in after him. Don't make like a hero. Your last chance, fella. I'm going to count to three. There he is. I think you got him. Don't move. He's awful quiet. Cover me while I hit the lights. You got him. Yeah, it looks like. Turn him over. Well, what do you know? You recognize him? Yeah, they call him the dummy. His name is Harold Plant. I wonder what he had against me. Well, you were trying to find Tony Paletti's killer. You think this is our boy? Well, he worked for Lasker. But I didn't see Lasker. Oh, but I bet Novak did. Five will get you ten. They plan this little surprise together. Yeah, you're probably right. Get him out of here, will you? Hey, where are you going? Over to see Mrs. Paletti. Just make sure you don't leave the place in a mess. Hello, Marie. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I just dropped by to report the latest. Come on in, Mike. Thanks. Oh, are you alone? No, my brother's here from Newark. He just stepped out to get a paper. Uh-huh. Did you make any arrangements for Tony's... Funeral? You don't have to be afraid to say the word. It's going to be Tuesday. You coming? Of course. If you think of anybody else that should be notified, let me know. Yeah, I'll call the boys myself. They almost had a double header. What do you mean? Some hood was waiting for me in my apartment. Luckily, Sergeant Corbett proved a better shot. Who was it? A boy they called the dummy... He works for Lasker. You think he was the one that killed Tony? No, I don't think so. For one thing, the eyewitnesses who saw the murder said Tony talked to the man who shot him. This boy was a mute. Maybe he was the one driving the car. I doubt it. Well, it's not important. As a matter of fact, it's very important. How did you know there were two men involved in Tony's murder? You said so. I don't see how I could have. I didn't know it myself. According to the reports, there was only one. So I made a mistake? Yes, you did, Angel. A bad one. What are you talking about? You were responsible for Tony's murder. You feel all right? And you heard me tell him his namesake was in trouble. It gave you ideas. You're crazy. You must have figured it was too good an opportunity to miss. 
Why did you do it, Marie? He loved you. You know, you can be pretty dull. Well, if you think I am, wait till you get a load of Sergeant Corbett. Get your coat. What for? We're going down to headquarters. Okay, if it'll make you happy. Yeah, uh, hold it. Just leave your bag right there. You wouldn't expect me to go out with a good-looking man without powdering my nose. I said drop it. Let go. Come on, Marie, drop it or I'll break your arm. Go. Go. Frankly, after your little stunt, I don't even need that go. much excuse. Just goes to show you. <laughs> Who'd ever have thunk this was just a case of a dame trying to get rid of her husband? Well, I would have if I'd had any brains. The signs were there all along, Corbett. I don't see where. You told me those hoods from Detroit left town without finding the other Tony Paletti. That should have been the tip-off. Oh, well, my information could have been wrong. Why'd she do it anyway? Well, that's what got me. Then I realized her brother from Newark must have supplied the motive. Huh? He wasn't her brother. You mean the two of them? Yes. You suppose Tony knew? No, he was the trusting type. I can't help thinking it's all my fault. Ah, don't be a sap. Well, if I hadn't told them about the other Tony Paletti being hot, this stunt might never have occurred to Marie. Ah, don't kid yourself. When a dame like Mrs. Paletti makes up her mind about something, that's it. (laughs) She didn't need anyone to give her ideas. She had plenty of her own. And her last one was murder. Well, good night, Sergeant. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Paula. Oh, you'll have to cancel me out tonight. I've got to do some antique collecting. Well, I don't like it either, but I have to go through with it if it kills me. Oh, don't give up hope, Angel. It may at that. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon... Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the burning bridges. It's early afternoon in Manhattan, and in New York's Chinatown, a rugged-looking gent named George Bridges pushes his way through a mob of Chinese and heads for a small shop. The legend Kessler's Imports is on the store window. Yes, sir? Can I help you? I don't think so. I'd like to see Mr. Kessler. Well, Mr. Kessler doesn't like to be disturbed unless it's very important. Well, if it isn't, I've traveled 3,000 miles for nothing. My name is George Bridges. Oh, well, just a second. Yeah, what is it, Joan? I'm sorry to bother you, Julian, but there's a gentleman out here to see Mr. Kessler. His name is George Bridges. Never heard of him. Oh, tell him I'm a friend of Oppenheimer in San Francisco. Yes, I heard of Julian. All right, Joan, show the gentleman in. If you'll just follow me, please. I'd love to. Uh, Do come in, Mr. Bridges. Thanks. That will be all, Joan. Yes, sir. Oh, this is a great pleasure. Well, this is my associate, Robert Julian. Glad to know you. Likewise. Well, do sit down. Thanks. And what can I do for you? I'm interested in buying a Hoshin Buddha. The Hoshin Buddha? Yeah, I understood you had one for sale. And where do you understand that from? Oppenheimer. Oh, he uh, told me to give this to you. Dear Kessler, this will serve to introduce George Bridges. He's interested in completing his collection of Buddhas. Anything you can do for him will be appreciated, Gustav Oppenheimer. Uh, Julian, don't we have another letter from Oppenheimer on the files? Yeah. Get it like a good boy. Uh, What do you think this one is, a forgery? It never occurred to me, Mr. Bridges, but now that you mention it, it might bear investigation. Have you got it, Julian? Yeah. Uh, What do you think? Looks okay to me. Well, now that we've got that settled, let's get down to cases. What do you want for the Hoshin Buddha? Uh, This presupposes I have one for sale. Well, if you haven't, I'm wasting my time. Uh, Just a second, Mr. Bridges. You realize a Hoshin Buddha comes very high. There are only four in existence. 
This one was uncovered during the Boxer Rebellion. All right, never mind the history lesson. What's your price? $250,000. You must think you're dealing with a chump. Perhaps you'd like to see a picture of it. I believe we have I one. don't have to. It figures from the size it couldn't hold more than five kilos of the stuff. Pardon? Look, Kessler, let's not do any more fencing, huh? I'll pay $70,000. you are trying to take advantage of me. You realize what five kilos would yield after cutting? 70,000. Take it or leave it. What do you think, Julian? Take it. Very well, Mr. Bridges. I assume you have the money on you. I, um, got it at my hotel. When can you make delivery? Where are you staying? At the Brighton. Under what name? My own. Is that safe? Do I tell you how to run your business? <laughs> You're so right. Uh, suppose we make it for tomorrow at 12. Okay, I'll see you then. Good day, sir. A nice meeting you, Julian. Yeah. Friendly guy, ain't he? Well, in my lifetime, I've discovered, Julian... That... What's the matter? Something just occurred to me. You think he's a phony? If you step here in the corner, I'd like to show you something. What's up? Take a look at my desk. You notice anything strange? No. Well, you're not very observant, Julian. You left the key on the intercom down. I what? Mm-hmm. Who is that font? The girl. You think she hurt? There's one way to find out. Well, Joan, dear. Yes, Mr. Kessler. Would you come in here? I have an errand for you. Of course. She heard. What are you going to do? I haven't made up my mind, Julian. But when I do, believe me, you'll be the first to know. Do I? Uh, I'm looking for a mic wearing. Well, you couldn't have picked a better place. Come in. Thank you. Sit down, Miss. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I don't believe I caught your name. It's Calvin, Joan Calvin. Mm -hmm. Try the sofa. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Oh, don't be frightened, darling. It is only a man's apartment. Well, I didn't mean it that way. I did. Uh, can I offer you a Smirnoff martini? Uh, no, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. You see the vodka I... in it? came here on business, Mr. Waring. I see. Well, you can't rule a man out for trying. What's your problem? Well, that's just it. I, I don't know. Come again? Well, you see, I work for an importing firm, and this morning my employer had a conference with a man from San Francisco. I don't know how it happened, but the intercom key was down. So you couldn't help eavesdropping, hmm? Well, yes. They were talking about something called the Hoshin Buddha. It, it dates back to the Wang Dynasty. This man was going to buy it for $70,000. Well, what's wrong with that? Art objects come high. I know. But I checked with the library, and there never was a Wang dynasty. Oh, no wonder it's so rare. What's your employer's name? I... I can't tell you. I may be doing him an injustice. Now, look, Angel... Oh, please don't press me, Mr. Waring. <laughs> what would you have me do? Well, right after this gentleman left... My employer called me into his office and gave me this. Grand Central Claim Department, not responsible for goods left over 30 days. Mm -hmm. You think this is for the Buddha? Uh-huh. Can you describe it for me? Oh, I can do better. I've got a picture. Uh, well, I've seen a million like this in Chinatown. Well, then why should this one be worth so much money? I don't know, Angel. Let me have the claim check. Well, Where do you live? At the Marlboro. All right, go home and wait. I'll be by as soon as I pick this thing up. Attention, please. The Chicago Limited, due to arrive at 427, will be eight Hey, buddy. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, I'd like to pick up this parcel, please. Uh, 41776. The Missouri yeah, just Express leaving for Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Chicago, and points west. Now loading at gate 7. Have your ticket. Hey, what's ready, taking so long? Please. All right, keep your shirt on. I got it. Now, it's a funny thing. I remember checking this parcel for a guy this morning. You don't look nothing like him. He sent me to pick it up. Got any identification? Sure. Well, let's do Michael Waring, 419 East... 
Yeah. Uh, sorry I troubled you, Mr. Waring, but company rules, you know. All right, sure, that's all right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's okay. The Missouri Express, uh, leaving for Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, uh, Chicago, and Point Excuse me, fella, you, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a match? Seven. Yeah, sure. Thanks. It's all right, keep the book. You're a real generous type kid, aren't you? What? Maybe I can do something for you. I doubt it. You never know. How about a lift? No, thanks. I'll take a cab. Come on, fella. You ought to know why I'm keeping this hand in my pocket. Just walk on like nothing happened. Why? Is something going to? Well, if you don't behave yourself. Hold it. <laughs> well, make up your mind. I just came to the conclusion it'd be silly to waltz you all the way through this joint. Let's see what's behind that door. Huh? Well, can't you read? Don't get gay. Just pick them up and lay them down. Okay, Corporal. Well, nice and quiet here. Eh? Well, I got a feeling it won't be for long. I got the same feeling. Where'd you get that parcel? What's it to you? Look, fella, don't get smart. Just lay it down on the floor. Now, back up a couple of steps. Oh, that's fine. Now, tell me something about yourself. Uh, sure, Julian. What did you call me? Julian, isn't that your name? How'd you know that? I got a great memory for faces. You were pointed out to me about nine years ago in Detroit when you were running with the Purple Mob. And what do they call you? Mike Waring. Where'd you get that claim check? I found it in the street. I asked you something. And I answered it. Joan Calvin gave it to you, didn't she? Look, Julian, I think I've been very patient. I don't know what you want. Get back. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. No. In your place, I'd probably do the same. You see? But then I'm not in your place, and right now I wouldn't change for the world. No. <clears throat> There's one thing I can't stand. It's a wise guy. Well, that's the story, Kessler. When Joan didn't show up, I got suspicious. Then I saw this character come up and present the check. How far away were you, Julian? Maybe 30 feet. And from that distance, you knew immediately our little Johnny had sent him? That was very bright of and you. I told you I had a hunch. When he picked up the parcel, I knew I was right. And how do you suppose Mr. Waring came to have the claim check? Why don't you ask Joan? Yes, I intend to. Unfortunately, she isn't here. Well, shall we see if the gods have been kind to us? The Hoshin Buddha. Isn't it lovely, Julian? It puts me in mind of a poem I once read. Puts me in mind of our friend George Bridges. He's still waiting, remember? Oh, yes. Uh, hand me that paperweight. You going to open it now? Yes. Like you, I'm given to hunches. What are you talking about? Paperweight, please. I was wrong. What do you expect? I thought it might be empty. In any event, I think it needs testing. Careful. You don't want to take off, you know? I don't think there's much danger of that. It's sugar. It's what? <laughs> See for yourself. We've been double-crossed. So it would appear. Now, where do you think it came from? Could be that Mike Waring. I don't see how, Julian. By your own admission, he had no time to make a substitution. When did you say you saw him? Around 4.30. And you didn't get back to the shop till 7? It was a quarter of... It's still two and a quarter hours to be accounted for. Look, are you accusing What's me... What's the old cliche, Julian? If the shoe fits... Look, Kessler, I don't have to take that kind of talk. Still $70,000 worth of merchandise has disappeared. It would be most interesting to know what happened to it. Aren't you forgetting Joan? Suppose she was working with Bridges. It's a possibility. Get up and hang on the phone in San Francisco and ask him what he knows of the gentleman. Ask him yourself... I'm going over to see that wearing character. I wish you wouldn't. Look, I've got as much at stake in this thing as you have. I'm going to do my own checking. Why not wait to hear what Oppenheimer says? It'll keep. You just let me know what happens. I hope you'll do as much for me. Take care of yourself, Julian. I should hate for anything to happen to you. I don't blame you. What? Remember me? <coughs> How could I ever forget? You made quite an impression. And I still got the gimmick that did the trick. <coughs> and you're smoking too much. <coughs> Shut the door. Well, I was hoping I'd seen the last of you. No. 
Oh, we're going to get real chummy. <coughs> now, do you want some water? <coughs> Stay right there. Maybe if I patted you on the back, you let go. Come on, drop it. Drop hey. it. Hey. Now, kick it in the corner. All right, now you and I are going to have a nice long talk. <coughs> Come on, Julian, get up. We're just starting. I said on your feet. Julian. Julian. Hello, Tony. This is Mr. Waring. Look, be a good kid and call the police. I've got a visitor here who won't leave. No, no, no. It wouldn't do any good for you to talk to him. He's dead. I think we'll just have to wait for the cops. Can you stop in time? Ask yourself that question the next time you drive your car. If the car in front of you should jam on his brakes to avoid a stray dog, if a child should dash across an intersection, if a tire should blow out, could you stop in time to save a life? Slippery roads, fogged windshields, poor visibility, all of these factors mean that you must be more alert in following simple safety rules. Always get the feel of the road before you accelerate. Check on your driving habits. Be careful. Accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty minutes have passed since Mike Waring slugged Robert Julian, only to discover that his man couldn't get off the floor. Now there's no question in Sergeant Corbett's mind but that our hero packs a deadly wallop. Oh, don't be a chump, Corbett. I didn't kill him. Well, he was alive when you socked him. Yes. Now he's dead. You explain it. What do you make of this? The man liked red neckties. Yeah, red shirts, too? Huh? Look under the tie. Notice the blood clot? Where did it come from? No, don't touch him. I just wanted to show you. Well, he was stabbed. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see that letter opener. Oh, don't be a fool. Nothing as wide as a letter opener made this incision. It was probably done by something like a nail file. Five will get you ten. It happened long before he got here. Well, then how did he make it over? Well, with an internal hemorrhage, he could have lived for hours. He might never have even known he was hurt. You said you ran into him earlier today. I did. He took that parcel away from me at Grand Central. Well, then what was the point of the return engagement? I don't know. You suppose your client does? You mean Joan Calvin? Yes. What do you know about her? Well, everything. She looks like she posed for a Mo Judd hosiery ad. By you, this is everything? Well, isn't it enough? Not for me. Especially with people getting themselves knocked off in your apartment. I guess you're right, Corbett. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll split the assignment two ways. You take care of Julian, I'll take care of Joan. I give you my word, Mr. Waring. I've told you all I possibly can. Well, it ain't nearly enough, Angel. Now, since I met you, the most interesting things have happened. One, I get slugged as soon as I pick up your package. When I come to, I find the same character again waiting for me in my apartment. Well, that's not my fault. How well did you know Julian? I didn't know him at all. Look, Joan, we're dealing with a murder now. We're not playing games. Who do you work for? Paul Kessler. Did Julian work for him, too? Yes. When did you last see him? Well, this morning at work, before Mr. Kessler gave me that claim check. And you haven't seen him since? No. Okay, let's get back to Kessler. How did you get the job? I answered Ned. When was this? Oh, about three weeks ago. Did you notice anything out of line? Nothing, except that they seem to discourage business. Any time a customer would walk in, they'd... Well, I guess the expression is brush him off. Yeah, but there was one customer they didn't slough off. Huh? The boy from San Francisco you heard on the intercom. What was his name? Uh, I can't remember. Come on, Joan, think. No, I... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Bridges. Bridges? Mm -hmm. You remember his first name? Uh, I, I think it was George. You think he killed Julian? Yeah, we'll cross those bridges when we get to the... Uh-oh, what I said. After I see Kessler, I'm going home and wash my mouth out with soap. I'm terribly sorry, sir. We're closed for the day. Maybe it'll pay you to open again. I hardly think so. Well, you never know. I might prove the customer of the year. I'm interested in a Buddha. Well, there's a shop on the corner. No, it doesn't handle this kind. I'm looking for the Ho Shin Buddha. 
It's supposed to date back to the Wang Dynasty. It must be extremely rare. Yes, extremely. You see, there never was a Wang Dynasty. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, that's because you're 20 miles ahead. Won't you sit down, Mr... Uh... Waring, Mike Waring. Oh? Well, what can I do for you? I told you I'm interested in a Ho Shin Buddha. <clears throat> but by your own admission, there is no such thing. Now, strangely enough, there is. Matter of fact, I had my hands on it earlier today. Only someone took it away. Someone named Robert Julian. You know him? Yes, very well. And you should be interested in learning that he was murdered. I beg your pardon? And you should beg his. He was stabbed to death. Where did this happen? That's what I'd like to know. When was the last time you saw him? At two this afternoon. He was waiting for me at my apartment at nine. Where do you suppose he was in the meantime? I have no idea. I have. I think he was here. Oh, you're mistaken, my friend. Well, that's possible. Happens often enough. By the way, what made that Buddha so valuable? I, I wouldn't know. Yet a girl named Joan Calvin who worked for you was supposed to pick it up. She showed me a picture of it. She did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked like this fellow here. Oh, please don't handle the merchandise. Oh, I'm so sorry it slipped. There's nothing in it. What did you expect? Well, I don't know exactly. But you had a customer for it. A man named George Bridges. How does he figure in this? Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a detective. That's right. And then you should tell me. Now listen, Kessler. I'm so sorry. As I said before, it's past our closing hour. That'll be 498, please. Huh? For the Buddha you just destroyed. When you make a mistake, Mr. Waring, you should be prepared to pay for it. 498, please. Kessler Imports. Are you Kessler? Yes. George Bridges. Oh, how are you, Mr. Bridges? Not so hot. Your boy didn't show with the merchandise. Oh, there's been an unavoidable delay. Yeah, well, I'm due back on the coast. I got a reservation tomorrow at 8 on the El Capitan. You think you'll be able to deliver before then? It's very problematical. Look, Kessler, there are other dealers in New York. Now, either you want my business or you don't. Oh, I do. But you see, Julian met with an unfortunate accident. Huh? Poor fellow. He was murdered. How'd that happen? I have no idea. But I think a man named Michael Waring does. Uh, well, how does this Waring character affect our deal? <laughs> he doesn't. Just be patient, Mr. Bridges. I'll get to you in time. Come in, fella. The water's fine. Huh? You know, this is the second time this has happened today. Huh? Yes. And he had a gun, too. You better change your lock. You better change your luck. He wound up murdered. Well, you must be real tough. No, not me. I was scared stiff. Well, what's your name? Or maybe I can guess. Maybe you can. Well, I got a hunch of George Bridges from San Francisco. How'd you know that? I'm psychic. Look, what's your interest in this, Waring? Same as yours. No, it isn't. You're doing business with Kessler? In a manner of speaking. And you ought to know I didn't get the Buddha you picked up. Hey, wait a minute. You look like the guy in the baggage room. I look like a lot of people. Did you notice what happened to me afterwards? No. I was hijacked. Where's the Buddha now? I have no idea. Can you get me one? If the price is right. I'll pay 70000 Tell me something, Bridges. What makes that Buddha so valuable? Don't you know? I got an idea, but I'd like to confirm it. You know, Waring, I was right all along. You don't know from nothing. No, but I'm learning. Not nearly enough. If you're smart, you'll start minding your own business. This is my business. A man named Robert Julian was murdered right here. Yeah? Well, if you don't want some of the same treatment, you'll stop sticking your neck out. Now, out of my way. Hey, not so fast. Well, you can move. Now, put the gun away, Bridges. You wouldn't dare use it. A shot would bring down the house. Yes, you're so right. But you forget a gun has two ends. And under proper conditions, one end is as effective as the other. Oh. Let's see what I mean. Unbelievable as it may sound, accidents on the nation's highways in the last ten years have killed more than 300,000 Americans like you and me. What's more, they have injured no fewer than 11 million men, women, and children, crippling several million of these victims for life. 
Help to protect your own life and the lives of your family by driving safely. Work for greater highway safety for yourself and for your family in your own community and state. And whenever you take the wheel of your own car, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty minutes have passed since Mike entertained George Bridges in his apartment. And this was one Bridges Mike never should have attempted to cross. Oh, oh my head. What's the matter, boy? Can't you take it there anymore? <sighs> you ought to be used to it by now. Oh, what are you doing here, Sergeant? Well, your elevator boy found you and gave us a buzz. Well, who did it this time? The boy who killed Julian. Huh? Now, look, Corbett, I've got it all figured out. His name is George Bridges. George Bridges? Yes, when you latch on to him, we'll be home. Oh, we will? Yes. Why do you suppose he killed Julian? To get his hands on that boot I told you about. Well, for your information, George Bridges happens to be a treasury agent. You what? He's head of the narcotics division. <laughs> you had him pegged as a killer. Oh, you're a real bloodhound, Mike. I'm going to get you a can of strong heart. Yeah, but if Bridges was a government boy, what does he want with me? Well, you know your talent for butting in. You must have wanted to find out if you were mixed up in this deal. Well, at least I'm making progress. Oh, you're making progress. Yep. I know now that Bridges didn't kill Julian. Oh, you're amazing. Mm hmm. Let me at that phone. Who are you calling? My client. What? Joan Calvin? Yes. She can put the finger on the guilty party. If she doesn't lose her nerve, we can wrap this up in 15 minutes. Hello? Joan, this is Mike Waring. Oh, I'm so glad you called, Mike. I'm getting frightened. Well, now, there's nothing to worry about, Angel. We'll have this thing solved in minutes if you'll only cooperate. Now, here's what I want you to do. Grab a cab and go down to Kessler's shop. But you told me I was fired. Well, I've got a new job for you. Now, be a good girl and go right to work. Just a second, please. Uh, Mr. Kessler. You seem surprised, my dear. Well, I expected... Someone else? Well, after all, this is my establishment. Uh, I, I'm afraid I made a mistake. You've made several, my dear. Sit down. No, I'll come back later. I wouldn't think of it. You know, you're a very stupid girl, Joan. What? Really, I've misjudged you completely. Why did you hire Mike Waring? Now, look, Mr. Kessler... I'd be very interested in your reasoning. Of course, I have my own theory. And you're probably right. Mike! Hello, Angel. Almost missed my cue, didn't I? Oh, this is Sergeant Corbett. Are we interrupting anything? No, not at all. I thought you were asking Joan why she hired Waring. It's not too important. Well, you're not very flattering. She came to me because she was worried, and she had reason. She was mixed up with several unsavory characters... One of these characters subsequently got himself murdered. Poor Julian. Yes, well, at least his problems are over. Tell me, who do you think did it? I wouldn't know. Oh, well, now, you must have some idea. <laughs> I'm afraid not. You told me the last time you saw Julian was at 2 o'clock this afternoon. That's right. How was he dressed? He was wearing a blue suit with a, a yellow tie. Well, he's lying. He, he was wearing a red tie. Thanks, Angel. I knew you'd be helpful and... Okay, Sergeant, what are you waiting for? What are you talking about? Well, don't you see who killed Julian? No. Well, who do you suppose dreamed up this double cross? Who's the smart wheel that made all the little cogs go? Well, her? No, him. Really, Mr. Waring? No, really, Mr. Kessler. You did a nice piece of work. This is no time for you to go modest on the people. All right, Sergeant, make like a policeman. I don't get it. I just don't get it at all. What's your problem, little man? Talk about your switches. This is the first time I can remember in this kind of a case where the girl didn't do it. Well, Kessler was your most obvious suspect. Uh, proving that the most obvious suspect is guilty can get you barred from the union. Now, what made you latch on to him? Well, it didn't make sense otherwise. According to Bridges, there was $70,000 worth of junk in that Buddha. Now, I ask you, would a guy like Kessler trust a girl you hardly knew to pick it up? Why should he? Julian was available. 
Then it occurred to me this whole thing must have been a test, and Kessler substituted Buddha's. Only Julian didn't know. No, and before he could find out, Kessler punctured his uh, vanity. Now, does that answer all your questions? Oh, all but one. How do you account for the mistake you made? Where did I make a mistake? Well, here there was a beautiful blonde in the case, and you wind up the evening with me. <laughs> now, if that ain't a boner, nothing is. My, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Well, what do you know? You say something, Corbett? <clears throat> no. Then I will. Good night, Sergeant. <laughs> The Case of the Dirty Dollar. The Case of the Dirty Dollar. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that some people with money to burn often wind up fried. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Howard Reig speaking. <laughs>